Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be looking at the 8 biggest mistakes you can make as a demon when playing Evil Dead the game. Now some of these I am guilty of a lot of the time and a lot of the time is because I like to play a bit more chilled so I might not sweat so much when playing against the survivors. Other times I'm just not thinking right so you might even watch some of my videos and think oh but hold on he's doing exactly what he said not to do and that's exactly why I'm telling you not to do this now is because I have rewatch my videos and realize gosh I shouldn't be doing this so let's get started mistake number one is not looking for survivors as soon as the game starts we've only got three maps to play and two of those maps are small enough that it's easy to figure out where the survivors are the small map is rectangular shape and it's quite easy to just go on a straight line up or down and you will very soon find the survivors on Castle Candor map you can figure out where they are by their fear levels if their fear levels are going up really quickly then most likely they're down south near the graveyard otherwise there might be a windmill or inside the castle itself those are pretty much the three locations that can spawn in that map if you're playing on the big map then you might just have to take a guess so look on the map check where the points are check where you are and then go elsewhere it's a very big map and you can easily spend a good six minutes looking for the survivors if they're being really quiet so good luck with that mistake number two is wasting too much time flipping cars so a lot of the demons they will spend most of the beginning of the match just flipping cars and while Whilst that can pay off at the end, it will take a lot of the time from your engagement with the survivors. And we all know you're only going to level up your demon if you are engaging with the survivors and setting up those traps. So if you spend a lot of the time flipping cars, most likely you're not going to level up as much as you will want in a short space of time once you find the survivors. Not to say don't flip any cars. When I come across one car or two that I know I can flip them easily, I'll just do it. Or if I already found the survivors and there's a car nearby that I think they might take, I might go and possess the car and just get rid of it just to prevent them from escaping me. But don't just go flipping the cars and completely ignore the rest of the game. That's a mistake. Number three is focusing on the wrong survivor. So a lot of the time survivors will split up and you will see that lone hunter jumping around windows and going for the houses. You do not want to focus on the hunters because the hunters have almost unlimited stamina and if they are a fishing village for instance then you might as well just move on because there's too many banisters everywhere, too many houses and they will just loop you around and waste your time completely. Leaders, similar, because leaders, since they've been buffed, they've got a lot more dodges, so you might want to ignore as well. But if you see a warrior on their own, I would probably go for that. They have a big health pool, but they will give you a lot more engagement than all the other classes, which should help you level up your demon. Obviously, if you see a support on their own, they are a very good target, so go for that as well. Mistake number four is not keeping an eye out for your infernal energy when possessing units. And this happens to me a lot actually. I'm in the middle of an engagement with the survivors and maybe I'm just chasing them and there's one unit very close to them. I go and possess the unit only to depossess two seconds later because I didn't realize I didn't have enough infernal energy. I just wasted a unit on the ground which could have created some kind of distraction for the survivor perhaps. Enough distraction that you could have gone and collect some more infernal energy to then perhaps place a portal or set up a trap on the tree just nearby. So make sure you keep an eye on your infernal energy just before you possess units and you are chasing the survivors. Mistake number five is not setting up traps once you're inside points. No wait, wrong clip. <laughs> once the survivors start the two main objectives there should be enough traps around that you can keep setting up so that you always have units on the ground and you're increasing the fear levels on the survivors a lot of the time in the heat of the battle we forget to do that and all we do is spawn more units possess engage rinse and repeat don't forget to stop sometimes look around set up the traps around you and then go back to spawning your units if you're playing with ball remember that every scare trap the survivors fall into will mark them and they will increase the damage they take for a period of time. Mistake number six is using the wrong unit against the wrong survivor. So this is similar to mistake number three which is you pick the wrong survivor and then you've possessed the wrong unit. So an example of this is you have possessed an elite unit and you're going after the hunter. You will never hit them unless they're absolute noobs at the game. Elites have the slowest attacks in the game and you will never hit 
Meter Hunter if they have the slight clue at what they're doing. To go against Hunters, your best bet are Basics. If you are going to use Elites, make sure you go for the Warriors, because those are the ones that are most likely to hit once they're done with their two dodges. However, even against Warriors, Elites might have a hard time, because a lot of experienced Warriors, they will do their two dodges and then they will disengage with you. If that's the case, you're going to have to stick to your Basics and just save the Elites for Bookface. Mistake number seven is using Boss in the middle of all the survivors when there's no other units around. So there's a right time and place for Boss, and it's definitely not when the all four of them are together, ready to go, and there's no other units around. The time that you want to bring the Boss into the battle is when there's lots of units on the ground, the survivors are engaged with all those units, and that can serve as a distraction for your Boss attacks. Another good time to use the Boss is when you found one survivor isolated just running from point to point. If there are houses around, it's very likely that they will get into the house and then your boss is going to go to waste because they're going to start looping you. But if they are out open in the playing field, then it's probably a very good time to use the boss. And then finally, mistake number eight is not focusing on the book during the book phase. During the book phase, it's pretty much all or nothing. If you're going to focus on the survivors during book phase, it's very likely that you're going to lose. Your best bet at this point, if you haven't killed the survivors yet, is to just go for book. So ensure that you are spawning your units one at a time. Don't spawn more than one portal at a time, possess them, do the damage to the book, rinse and repeat. With each demon you might have to use different tactics. I'm not going to go into all the tactics with each single demon, that can be a whole new video on its own. The main point of mistake number 8 is don't focus on the survivors during book phase, focus on the book. So that's it for all the mistakes on this video, there are loads more mistakes that demons do and I do it myself as well and I would love to hear what are the mistakes that you see demons do that most. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.